what do kids do when they don't hear the words I love you? They look for love elsewhere. You took the words right out of my mouth. Look at this, like we did barely even announced it. Your heart brought you here. This is not your head, this is your heart. And it doesn't matter if you have one penny or a billion dollars or some heart to give or some love to give or some kindness or compassion to give. Anything that comes to your mind, in your head or your heart, we're open to your ideas. And I'm gonna talk about sustainability tonight because without sustainability, which is the key word that I all want you to take away tonight, this is in vain. This, there, there's no reason for this, okay? We might have a temporary band-aid fix. However, we're looking for long-term sustainable change where we have some kids that have lost their way, that have been to hell and back, that are in hell right now. Kids are dying in the streets right now. Who is the most far gone in our community? Mississauga, Brampton, Caledon, all right? This is the test boundary of where we're gonna create this. Then we're gonna go right into Toronto. From Toronto, we're gonna start building uh, ranches across the country. Two in Halifax, two in Montreal, two in Toronto, two in Calgary, two in Winnipeg, two in Vancouver. So there's a 12 ranch project. Craig, Neil, and myself are in charge of rolling those out and kind of traveling with them as they open. And then we'll obviously be doing these types of meetings in every city respectively across the country. This is definitely an interesting evening. And if you in any way, shape, or form are interested in being involved with just a really cutting edge sort of project, right, that covers every level from social work to business to philanthropy to permaculture like everything's being covered um, and you want to connect with other you know high vibration plugged in sort of people then definitely you want to be here I think the major takeaway from this tonight is to have a better understanding of the plan around the reviver ranch and I think it's a brilliant brilliant idea um, I think it's very needed. Um, there's a lot of kids out there that desperately need a second chance that they might not get without this program. So I think it's excellent and highly needed. I can speak from personal experience. I go to York University. We're five minutes away from Jane and Finch. You see the problems. Even in the vi village, there's a lot of problems. And a lot of it is just that we live in a society that unfortunately puts a lot of the onus and burden on the individual um, to go out and fix their own lives. But I think that we all know that you need a support system and you need a network of people. And that's really what the people here are trying to provide. It's for these individuals who have slip, uh, slipped through the crack. We're kind of saying, we understand you, we've been there, and now we're reaching back to pull you back up. The first group of kids, 12 kids, will ultimately probably build it to a few more beds, but we're going to start with a very controllable group of 12 kids to do a beta project for 18 months, okay? Simultaneously, alongside the 18-month rollout of the beta, we're filming the Reviver movie. I can definitely relate to it. Uh, in 2005, I lost my husband to cancer, and my son has struggled ever since. He just came out of rehab in this last summer, um, and is also not doing well again. And I think that had there been a project like this years ago, when he really needed help, and he still does need help, but he's too old for this kind of help now, but had there been a project like James is doing now, I think it would have really helped him and, and, and saved him from going down the path that he's currently uh, going down. Sometimes it's nothing to do with whether they're bad kids or, or what. It's really to do with the circumstances that they're in and the way that they deal with it. My kid was uh, educated privately and had a great upbringing and just went down a bad path. It's really very important for us to try to get these kids early and try to help these kids where we can. Most definitely I can help with the transmission process, that idea of, of really redesigning your belief systems so you can grow out of that environment. So you, you're not looking back at, the, at that area. I grew up in an environment like that, so I have an 
understanding of what the challenges are. And I think that knowledge and my background as a coach can actually help to with that transmission process to actually help these boys really grow and become the people who can not only get out of the gangs and get away from that environment, but help others to, to move away from that kind of lifestyle and change their communities. For me, when I was younger, I was a troubled youth. Um, these are the people that they're trying to help. So for me, it's really important to get like-minded people who have actually walked down the wrong path and then taken the necessary steps to correct their life, just simply because they have more rapport than a lot of the people who are currently in the industry. I know when I was growing up and getting into trouble, a lot of the people that I encountered, they couldn't really relate to my lifestyle. A lot of them were coming from university, academics, suburbia, and so they didn't really relate to the inner city um, experience. This program is what a society needs to change the current flow of people being incarcerated and coming out and becoming better criminals. This is a way of avoiding that whole process and actually transforming people who are already on a dangerous path to turn around and become an asset to society. I'm going to be better. I am better. And what we share with these kids is it doesn't matter what you did in the past. What matters truly right here, right now is one thing. Who is little Joey right now? Who is little Jane right now? Who are you right now? What do you want to be? What do you want to do? Where are you going? Okay, we can't change the past, but you're not gone yet. You have one choice, and that's to be better. It's a personal thing for me, right? My brother was one of those kids. I, mean, I, I, I say it like he's dead or something. He's not. He's actually, he's, unfortunately, he's in prison, right? But he really could have benefited from this because my brother, I watched him firsthand make these really dumb decisions. I wish there were programs and plans that was available for us to take advantage of so he wouldn't, he wouldn't be where he is right now. We want to have it so the worst of the worst of the worst kids that are potentially on their way to prison or to death are banging on our door. I want in Reviver. I am ready to turn my life around. I am a genius. The reason I do this stuff is because I am a genius. I hate school. I don't learn like other kids. We have to actually pay attention to grabbing kids before they really go off the rails. To have these kids realize that there is something different they can do than what they're doing. What they are doing that gets them into this system, their actions, their decisions, but their actions, but it's not the core of who they are. These are good kids. Circumstantially, they have lost their way. Circumstantially, they might have a gun put in their mouth and say, if you don't go stab that other kid, we're going to blow your brains out tomorrow, or we're going to go rape your little sister, or we're going to go kick the heck out of your dad. Here I am standing and life is the most amazing it's ever been. So I have a lot of compassion for working with these young men because my husband was a gang member and I know the circumstances that he grew up with. And um, I just saw the humanity in him. You know, a lot of people saw him as a throwaway, um, but I knew another side. Being uh, a, a, one of these troubled kids myself, um, didn't have much support in the, uh, the uh, judicial system, if you will, uh, and you know, been to a, a couple different jails and stuff like that. Didn't see any kind of great rehabilitation efforts going on in there while I was there. And uh, this is more of a, like James always says, it's a boot camp of love. It's not your traditional uh, crazy boot camp where you know you're getting military style uh, put in check. It's, it's more of a, a loving, molding, guiding uh, type atmosphere which I think is definitely uh, a, a plus uh, for these type of kids and the issues that they go through. What I'd love to do is invite you guys out to the second and bring one friend. One person that you can think of that is the best fit for what we discussed tonight. Okay, just one. I'm going to be there. You got to be there. You want to be there. I would love to be a, a mentor. Um, I would love to even donate. We have a business, so we do t-shirts even to provide. This program is needed so badly that uh, I don't understand why there's not Prime Ministers here today. I am a Canadian. All right, the boys that are coming to this ranch are Canadian. Right now, especially in the world with all this crap going on all around the world, that seems to be getting forgotten in a lot of places. And we're here to remind the world that Canada has got it right.